after all of the carnage in the early stage biotechs over the past few months, is it finally time to start circling back to the higher quality but speculative biotechs that have such great long-term prospects? I think it might be. Consider Isis Pharmaceuticals, symbol ISIS, a stock that's rallied from $9 and change in October of 2012 when we first spoke to the CEO all the way up to $59 this February, before going into a tailspin along with the rest of the industry, sinking to $27.81, where it is right now more than cut in half from its highs. There's no doubting that ISIS, like many development stage biotechs, got ahead of itself, maybe became overvalued. But given the recent declines and the fact that the stock was able to pop nearly 11.5% today on positive data, I think it might now be okay to circle back on this one. Make no mistake, ISIS is not some pie-in-the-sky player that's trading on nothing but more than pipe dreams. It trades based on a very real pipeline. This company is a pioneer of what's known as antisense technology. It's uh, the drugs that would work by altering the RNA in a person's cells. Now, remember your high school biology people. RNA is the substance that takes the blueprints from your DNA, turns them into reality. So if you've got a genetic disorder, ISIS's platform lets them fiddle with your RNA so that the problem genes don't get expressed. This kind of thing may be the future of medicine. Now, ISIS has 32 drugs in its pipeline, many of which treat rare orphan diseases, something that can be incredibly lucrative for a drug company. That includes a phase three drug for TTR amyloidosis, a rare genetic condition that causes progressive damage in both the heart and the peripheral nervous system, and a potential blockbuster drug in phase two studies for spinal muscular atrophy. It's another orphan condition that leads to causes of infantile death worldwide. We've spoken about that many times. The company also has a number of cancer treatments in phase two and three trials, an anticoagulant that we just got some very positive data on today that I want to ask about, and some interesting formulations for diabetes. In short, ISIS, despite what can only be called a crash in its stock, is totally legitimate. Down here, I think it's attractive, even if the stock is still up 200% since we first heard from the CEO in October 2012. So let's check in with Dr. Stanley Crook. He's the chairman and CEO of ISIS Pharmaceuticals in the wake of his company's big R&D day yesterday. Find out more about where the business is headed. Dr. Crook, welcome back to Mad Money. Uh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, sir. I think that yesterday you showed that you're not just an orphan drug company, not that orphan drugs. We like we like those. But with this thrombosis uh, data that you presented, can you walk us through that? Because it sounds pretty uh, it's huge. It's not some niche uh, drug. No, it, it has the potential to be enormous. Obviously, it's still in phase two, but it's very exciting. Uh, there's still, uh, despite the fact that there are new anticoagulants and antithrombotics available, there's still a tremendous need uh, for a safer, more effective uh, antithrombotic, and, and factor 11 may be that. What we demonstrated in, uh, and we just presented the top line data, uh, we completed a fairly large 300, about 300 patient study in patients who were having knee surgery which is a, 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 a very uh, pro-thrombogenic uh, surgery where people get a lot of deep vein thromboses. And we compared two doses of our drug to uh, the standard of care, anoxaparin. And anoxaparin produced the, uh, uh, about its usual rate of deep vein thrombosis and bleeding. And, and, uh, and factor 11 was uh, sevenfold more effective uh, in reducing uh, 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 Th uh, thrombosis than was an oxaparin, uh, with no evidence of, of meaningful bleeding. In fact, uh, the numerically slightly smaller than than an oxaparin. So it's very exciting. Has the potential to be used very broadly in in treatment of people with cardiovascular disease and other ailments that have uh, uh, you know these deep vein uh, thromboses and and thromboembolic phenomena. And we have uh, a couple of indications that we think we can get at pretty quickly and pretty straightforwardly. So it's, it's another—it's a nice drug where we think we can develop it in a stage fashion, and yet it has the potential to be an extremely large uh, commercial opportunity. Well, but, you know, one of the things that shocked me about that, I mean, when I hear that, I'm sure when our viewers hear that, they say, well, why don't they just approve it? I mean, because people I know have gone in for knee surgery and they've died. I actually know people this has happened to. ISIS probably would have saved their lives. So what's the point of waiting? Well, I think we have more work to do. We have to, we, we have to of course, gain much broader, uh, broader and longer-term experience with the drug to make sure that it's as safe as it appears to be today. So I think that's the, the major next step. And then we need to evaluate it in a range of these disorders and demonstrate unequivocally that it works. So uh, the data are exciting, but there's more work to be done, and, and we're certainly excited to be doing it. Is that the same with, the, with this, what I think is a breakthrough triglyceride drug? 
more testing yep. needed. Yep, three. Yeah, yeah, but phase three is getting underway as we speak, uh, and it will move along very quickly. As you know, drug discovery and development is is a long and arduous process, uh, and very, very heavily regulated as it should be. Uh, so these processes do take time, and it's uh, it's often disappointing that we can't get the drugs that we believe in to patients sooner. But we're moving APOC three RX along as in a very rapid uh, fashion. And it really looks like a, a winner to us. Right, one last question I've got to ask you, Dr. Cork. Uh, the company, it seems like it's being valued only for what's most right in front of you and not being valued by the pipeline right now. So, I mean, if you were to look at the panoply, we're talking about drugs that could be used in the world within the next three or four years, right? You bet. We have six now. Uh, uh, TTRRX that you described is in phase three for these uh, very uh, terribly ill patients. APOC3 RX for uh, tr severe triglyceride problems. Uh, 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 Custrosin, which is an anti-cancer drug, being developed by Teva and and our our partners at at uh, at Oncogenics, uh, and and then of course we've got SMNRX. Uh, the data continue to be, uh, you know, certainly very very encouraging uh, with that with that drug and every day that goes on. I think the data are, are more encouraging. And now our partners at AstraZeneca have indicated that they may start phase three trials with the new anti-cancer drug, STAT3, next year. Uh, so we have six drugs that we think we can get to have a chance to get to the market in the next, uh, uh, by 2018. So that's very exciting. And then, of course, we have so many exciting other drugs that are just behind them, such as glucagon receptor uh, antagonist that we just reported, again, uh, top line data, and we'll be sharing the detailed data at the American Diabetes Association. So it's just uh, a tremendously exciting uh, pipeline and, and one that we think is filled with value and we're very proud of. Well, Dr. Crook, you have a great company. ISIS is a great company. I want to thank Dr. Stanley Crook, the chairman and CEO of ISIS Pharmaceuticals, for coming on. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Stock has just completely overcorrected. What can I tell you? How about taking a long-term position in ISIS, particularly younger people? This is my kind of stock. Don't move lightning rounds next.